So for the top one, mm -hmm. the chlorine, the whole, um, what is it, coordination complex, the entire charge would be a negative three. Good, so let's move on to that. Okay. So what would be the charge on each individual chloride here? <laughs> so the group for the group it would be negative, negative three. three. The charge on the ammonias is? Zero. Because the coordination compound overall must be neutral. Um, These weren't neutral because we were leaving out the counter ions. Okay. In these cases, we were only putting the complex ion and leaving out the counter ion. But if you include both the complex ion and the counter ion in the complete, this whole thing together is called the coordination compound. The whole coordination compound as a group has to be neutral. So that told us that this chromium must be chromium plus three. I'm sorry, cobalt plus three. So below here, we were doing cases where we were only given the complex ion, but we just figured out how to deal with the entire coordination compound as well. Notice that for purposes of oxidation number, it doesn't make any difference whether things are inside or outside of the brackets. We treat a chlorine inside the brackets the same as a chlorine outside the brackets for purposes of finding the oxidation number whereas they were treated very differently for the coordination number. So we just have different models for different numbers. For the coordination number, we only count the things that are connected inside the brackets. That's its definition. But for finding the oxidation number, it doesn't matter whether something's inside or outside of the brackets, it still has the same charge. Because oxidation number just approximates everything as, a, as an ionic bond, whether it's inside or outside the brackets. just learn that NH3 is a neutral molecule. Well, here's some other neutral molecules that can appear as ligands that you might be expected to have memorized in this table here. Um, water, mm -hmm. carbon, um, CO, and NO. So you're just expected to know that NO, CO, NH3, and H2 are all treated as neutral. Okay. So those might need to be memorized for the test. Also, there's certain ions you're expected to have memorized. For example, you're expected to have memorized that OH is negative. That's pretty obvious because that, that's like hydroxide. You, might, you guys might not have memorized cyanide. So you also are expected to know that cyanide is a negative ion. So this is an important table that you might be expected to have memorized. Now these halogens, we don't need to memorize because they make sense from the periodic table. Right. But we need to memorize that OH has a negative charge, CN has a negative charge, and these four things, H2O, NH3, CO, and NO, are all neutral. So this is a useful table here in your book. Also, for purposes of nomenclature, they give you the names to use for these here. Um, uh, okay, so anyway, yeah, we went over the charges. Here. So these are the most like uh, common ligands. What we yeah, see. those are the common, especially those are the common ligands which you couldn't figure out the charge from your from the periodic table. So that's why okay. they had to put a table okay. in, there, in there for that. Let's figure out the coordination. Well, what's the coordination number here? Four. And let me try again. I didn't write this down correctly. Let's make sure I'm writing this down right. Okay, what's the coordination number here? Four. Yeah. because there's four CN ligands attached to the nickel. Now let's find the oxidation number on the nickel. So it's plus oh, so actually, maybe you didn't get the right answer. Yeah, it's going to be yeah you guys did not get the right okay. answer. So let's try that again. So now, first of all, what's the charge on each cyanide? Uh, minus negative one. one. How do we know? Because we just learned that from the table. Yeah. We just learned from the table these are each negative one. So I'll put this here. So together, they're negative four. Mm -hmm. 
All right, but notice that this is not the full coordination compound, which would have to be neutral. Here, we're only given the complex ion. And they, t and they told us what the charge is on the complex ion. What is the charge on this complex ion? Negative 2. So what does this charge have to be? 2 plus. Po positive 2. That's right. So the only time it has to be neutral is when it's a coordination compound? Yeah. The only thing that you would know has to be neutral is the full coordination compound, which oh, okay. includes both the cation and the anion. Okay. But here they only gave us one of the ions. Anyway, they told us what the charge should be. The charge should be negative 2, because they've left out the thing that balances that. Okay, this might have wrong-footed you a little, because in the past, all the complex ions I gave you before were cations. This is the first complex ion that I've given you that's an anion, but it can go either way. You could have a complex cation and um, a counterion that's an anion, or you can have a complex anion and a counterion that is the cation. For example, in this case, the counterion could be something like, this might be how they would write the full coordination compound, right? Because sodium, we know, tends to have a plus one charge because it's in the first column of the periodic table. And when you write the full coordination compound, you don't you need to put this charge over here because it should be obvious this has to be negative two to balance this positive two. Mm -hmm. The only time they have to give you the charge is when they're not giving you the counter ion because okay. then you can't figure it out. So in this case, we could figure out this has to be negative two overall to balance this. So there's two different types of oxidation number problems you might get. Some where you're given the full neutral coordination compound, and some where you're only given the complex ion. And we're also learning here that complex ions can be either cations or anions. Okay. The previous examples we did were cations, but this is an anion. So the coordination number for the nickel here was four, but it has an oxidation number of positive two. So what's the coordination number here? Four. And let's figure out the oxidation number of the column. Four. Plus one. Sounds good. Again, we already know that cyanides have negative one charges, so negative four overall. Here we're just given the complex ion. We know it has to be negative three overall, so this must be plus three. So this would be copper three plus. No. Plus one. Yeah, what you said was right. I just wanted to say copper one plus. That's right. Okay, so that's how we find these oxidation numbers. And again, I encourage you to use this notation of putting individual charges down below and overall charges up above. Mm -hmm. Something else that we can learn from these pages. Yeah. By the way, there's going to be other chapters where you're working with oxidation numbers. For example, when you do electrochemistry. And again, I would recommend using the same notation, individual yeah. charges below and overall charges above. Let's go back one page. Here's some other lichens that you're expected to know. So here they have water, fluoride, cyanide, which we all learned is negative hydroxide, ammonia, chloride. Here's another one that wasn't in that table, theocyanate, SCN, which you also should know is negative. SCN is negative. And here's nitrite, which is also negative. So here's some more ligands that you might be expected to know or at least look up in the table. Also, you might remember from class, some ligands can attach in two places to the central atom. For example, here they have um, ethylene diamine, which they abbreviate with EN. And both of these nitrogens can connect to the ligand. So this is called bidentate, which means two teeth. So this can attack at this place and at this place which will give you two coordination numbers. So every, time, uh, for, uh, so every one ethylene diamine counts as two coordination numbers. Mm -hmm. So if you were connected to two of these, your coordination number would be four. Oh, okay. If you were connected to two ethylene diamines, there would be four connections total and for a coordination number of four. So that's something you're expected to know, and you're expected to know the abbreviation for that is EN. Also, oxalate is bidentate, because you can connect it either of these two oxygens. And here's some even more complicated ones that I don't know that the instructor is going to get into. But um, EN is pretty common, so that's one that you should definitely okay. know about.
the atom that connects to the transition metal is called the donor atom. So those bidentates have two donor atoms. So you mean NH2? Yeah, in particular the N would be, the, the two Ns would be the, the two donor atoms. 